Weber and Leitner. And the 1992 championship game is underway. It's going to be King on Hurley to start. Leitner dribbled it right off his own leg. Jim, remember the telestrator when we said keep in touch? You notice how Jawan Howard early on in that first game stayed away from Leitner when he on the perimeter. Today, he's right out there with him. As Howard with the ball. He had flu-like symptoms yesterday and stayed in bed. Tough pass inside. Jackson tries to squeeze it over to Weber, and Hill is pounded to the floor. Foul against Weber. Good job of collapsing man to man by Duke University. It looks like Mike Krzyzewski has decided to put Leitner on Weber, put Lang on Howard, figuring that Weber is the guy that can have the big game. Leitner. Hill gets the long rebound. Stripped out of his hands, it belongs to Duke. Grand Hill with three great putbacks for offensive rebounding baskets in the Indiana game was a key to that great run that they had to get back in the lead. Leitner wants to get started on his game after an off Saturday, and there's the miss by Grant Hill. Jalen Rose looks up court. Howard, and a foul against Thomas Hill. Good weak side help by Hill, and you can see the perfect lob pass to Jawan Howard inside. Well, it's number 12, Thomas Hill. Not since UCLA of 73 has there been a repeat champion. In fact, since that time, only three champions, defending champions, have made it back to the final four the next year. UCLA in 74. Billy, remember right. that one lost right. to North Carolina Great State. Great game with NC State. That's and four. Georgetown 85. That's one we thought was in the bag, except for Raleigh Massimino's club upset that one. And of course, last year. UNLV 91. Yep. And I and personally thought yep. that one was in the bag. So it is tough to get back to the top of the championship. Oh. Still looking for the game's first point. Hill will drive to the paint, give it back to Thomas Hill. Hurley inside the Leitner. Stolen away by Weber. Not a good pass by Leitner. Two turnovers by Leitner. Howard has the block. Too strong, and another foul inside. Going to be Jalen Rose coming over the back. Teams are a little tight, Jim, to start this ball game. Well, is charged to number five, Jalen Rose, his first team second. So the first on Rose and the second against Michigan. And you notice what Duke is doing early on here. They're having Bobby Hurley go down low. Let Grant Hill take the ball up on the top. Hurley being a better perimeter shooter. There he is. Thomas Hill on the tip. That's the by number 12, Thomas Hill. Duke going to that double low post with Bobby Hurley stepping out. We know what a good outside shooter he is. Big overplays by Duke. I'd expect Rose to try to dribble Hurley on inside, shoot that leaning left-hander of his. He's now posting up down under the basket looking for the lob pass. Gets around Leitner. Great. Blocked wow. by Hill. Grant Hill blocked it, but right back to Michigan. Jackson saved it. Got it over to King. That's a three. Jimmy Jackson lit it up early against Cincinnati. He was the one fellow that seemed to have his stroke. Both teams very tentative offensively to start this game.
Jim, I'm surprised that Duke doesn't start Leitner down low. Try to get him on a roll with some easy baskets as opposed to playing on the perimeter so much with Howard. Jalen Rose really wanting to post up Bobby Hurley inside. Hurley gives up about eight inches. Rose and Howard in this area. Rose, he traveled. Good switching by Duke on the inside. Now what happens when you take your point guard and take him off the ball to post up inside? It can take the normal flow of your team completely away. It's kind of like trying to foul out a particular player. The rest of the four guys have a tendency to stand around. So see how long Steve Fisher stays with that strategy. Duke is only one for five from the floor. The only basket a tip in by Thomas Hill. Leitner doubled up. E excellent double team. It leaves Lang wide open. They have two two players and only one Michigan player under the goal, but right off the fingertips of Lang. They credit the turnover to Leitner, so that's his fourth. Duke, Cherokee Park had such a big game on Saturday. Replaces Leitner. And there's a little discipline move by Mike Krzyzewski wanting Leitner to settle down. Figure he may be too high up for this ball game. And here's where Rose can be more effective. Howard right over Park. He challenges it right away. bit of tension on the face of Weber enjoying the spotlight he's been smiling since they took the floor savoring the moment Hurley a long range three Ooh, he sets a Duke record with six threes in the victory against Indiana and Jim they were huge threes because Duke was really struggling at that time Hurley tries to make the save but he was on the line our first dead ball under 16 minutes. 15 15 to go. First half. 5 5, Michigan and Duke. Interesting story for each team, a similar story. There's Freddie Hunter, the captain of the Wolverines, finally a scholarship player, the second semester of his senior year. Three years ago, he was on the intramural championship team at Michigan. Freddie and the Seven Dwarfs. Hoping to be on the championship tonight, Freddie in the Fab Five. And on the other side, there's Ron Burt, who was one of 38 Duke players trying out for the team on October 15th. A year ago, he was on the Duke Intramural Champions, the dream team. And now his dream with a ring could come true tonight. Jim Leitner back in the game. Mike Krzyzewski just trying to get his head on straight with a little bit of a sit down. Now, this is a better matchup for Duke with the big team, Cherokee Parks, and it allows Hurley to play Jackson who is not a big score. Offensive on Weber, and that's his second. He fouled out in the first matchup this year against Duke. And, and you'll see Christian Leitner gets over in front of him. Weber really had an angle, but he pushed off with that inside hand. And Jim, not only did he foul out of that game, we remember what happened in the Southeastern Conference, uh, the Southeast Regional game against Oak State when he had to sit down with foul problems and thought it was all over and his freshman teammates said, hey, we're gonna win this one for you in advance, and they did. Yeah, he fouled out of that game in only 18 minutes. So Eric Riley is in for the Wolverines, replacing Weber. Brad Hill gets it back out last second. Thomas Hill right on the line, yes. Excellent ball penetration, and that's one of the things that Duke can do with three players around the floor. Thomas Hill, Hurley, and Grant Hill himself. I say right on the line, we had the perfect angle on that. You could tell it was good the minute it left his hands. It's a three. He wasn't on the three-point line. Cherokee, Cherokee Park stepping out, doing a pretty good man-to-man -man job on Howard. Matches up with him in size. Howard, good pass to Ray Jackson. Oh. Thomas Hill pulls it down, chases it down. Hurley makes the move to get by Rose. Pull up three, he's off the mark. Oh, that was, again, Grand Hill 
at 6'8", doing the job on the offensive boards. Leitner, wow! And stood still and watched the shot, Jim, after he missed it. And a steal by King. The first six minutes of this game, Christian Leitner's in a total funk. Right over Leitner, oh. they score. That's Eric Riley. We talked about some hot bench warmers. And Steve Fisher has been able to look down that bench. He must look in their eyes to figure out which one's hot, because as soon as he puts them in, they produce. Skip pass to Hill. Good defense by Rose. Yep. Parks pushed off for position. That's his first and the second against Duke. Nice defensive job by Riley to be in perfect position. And look at who's going to try to make an appearance here. One of Saturday's heroes comes in from Michigan, Bosco, and here is Brian Davis, the senior co-captain with the high ankle sprain. It's the first start he missed all senior season tonight. Antonio Lang is also back into the lineup for Duke after a short rest. Let's check out Davis. He's guarding King on this possession. Jimmy King ought to test him right away and see if he can beat him. There he goes. See if he can get with him on the drive. Riley bounces it in. Good pass. Score the basket. Foul against Curley. And Howard will shoot one. Excellent two-man inside game by Riley, who last year was the Big Ten's number two rebounder and Big Ten's number two shot blocker. This year finds himself on the bench because of that man, Howard, but certainly delivering. Perfect play. Bobby Hurley had no opportunity coming over from the weak side. It's been the year of Howards at Michigan. First it was Desmond claiming college football's biggest prize. And now Jawan Howard trying to get college basketball's championship ring. Leitner throws it away to Rose. Jim, that is Leitner's fifth turnover of the game. No points. Five turnovers. He's going to have to get himself moving. And if you're Bobby Hurley, you ought to let him touch the ball a lot to get out of this funk he's in. Still no action. And he's not following his shot either. He's shooting and standing and just looking at it. Three pointer by Rose. In and out, and Lang has it. Duke pushes it up. Oh, the hill. And Lost knocked ball. away. And for a second, Billy, it looked like Duke was trying to come back and replay a same kind of dunk from a year ago in the first half against Kansas that's one of the best in championship history. But a good play by Vasco getting over there. And he was the guy that was the difference in the game the other day against Cincinnati. Leitner now driving ah! off the glass and he gets started with his first two. And with Chris Weber on the bench, it's important that they get Leitner on track. Howard already put the ball on the floor once, and five it's seconds. a five count. He couldn't dribble with it. I don't think his teammates realized it. You see, he's signaling, hey, I'd already taken one dribble. An official's timeout with 11.42 to go first half. Wolverines by a bucket. Broadcasting legend Kaywood Ledford calling his final game tonight for CBS Radio voice of the Kentucky Wildcats. Let's listen in. Well, it has to be a very sore ankle. will inbounds the ball. Well, the, the real problem when you have an ankle as sore as he, as he has, he can't make quick cuts to the basket, so I don't think he'll be as effective. If he can react, then he can have, be a, a, a somewhat of a factor in this game. Hurley working around the top of the key. Can't get through. Gives it off to Thomas Hill. We can just call him Hill now because uh, Grant is on the beach. They go inside to Leitner. And Leitner trying to throw it back outside. Throws it away. Rose driving, alley-oop, tough shot by King. The turnovers, Michigan has 11, and they've gotten probably about six of those off of uh, Clayton's turnover. 14 to 10, Hurley drives to the right side. Going inside, here's Lang, and he is fouled by Howard as he tried to reverse layup. Howard got him. That is Howard's first, number four against the Wolverines. And it will put Antonio Lang on the line. Among Howard, the Duke starters, he is the poorest free throw shooter. 66% coming into this game, and he's looking for his first score of the game. Right here, he'll get two shots. 
Michigan has been to the free throw line three times, made one. This will be Duke's first two. Michigan with a four point lead, 14 to 10. Antonio Lang puts up the first of two. No good. And boy, it was a brick. Oh, boy. He pounded the backboard with that one. The only chance it had was to bank in off the board. Didn't make it. <laughs> Lang back on the strike. Shots up. Rattles a rim, but it stays in there. 14 to 11. And Duke goes to a full court press for the first time. With the ball is Riley. Puts down a dribble. Shows some. Oh, he throws a bad pass. After the trap got him, he leaped into the air, committed himself Kay to Kaywood Ludford. Wide. Our best so wishes to Kaywood, working the game on CBS Radio with Quinn Buckner. And you know, Billy, when Duke knocked out Kentucky in the East Regional Final, Mike Krzyzewski and all that pandemonium went over to the Kentucky broadcast setup, got himself a spare headset as Hill hits Thomas Hill and wished Kaywood Leopard all the best in his retirement. A class move by Mike Krzyzewski on what had to be a disheartening moment for Ledford, who thought he might be going back to the Final Four with his Kentucky team. Of course, the last time a Kentucky team played in the Final Four here was the only one ever held in Minneapolis, 1951, and they came away with a victory. There's Hurley with a breakaway. Picks up the loose ball and takes it to the glass for two. Those are the days of Adolph Rupp, Bill Spivey, Cliff Hagen. Early on a hand check. And that's two on Hurley, four on Duke in the first half. You can see Weber out with two fouls. Now Hurley's going to have to sit. There's Hurley splitting everybody on defense. Bosco stays with him. I thought Bosco gave him a push right there and got by with it. No call by the official. Hurley scored anyway, so Hurley has to sit. Weber has to sit. So two of the key players in our matchups are on the bench with foul trouble. And Leitner in a situation where he has one basket and six turnovers. Ryan Davis is defending Howard. Here's the matchup. Howard shoots it over him for two. What about Ryan Davis from what you've seen so far, Billy? Well, he's able to get up and down the court, but I don't see any movement out of him with, in regard to quickness and all. That'd be anticipated. I have never seen Duke turn the ball over quite as much as they are today. Very uncertain in their offensive set. And a lot of that be the fact I think that Christian Leitner has not taken over on the offensive end. Hurley right back in after a quick blow, and Brian Davis sits. Nine turnovers for Duke, but Duke trails by only a point. Jim, I'm going to go back to the Indiana game where I thought it was not a smart move by Duke to have Christian Leitner play that entire second half and basically take no shots and not touch the ball. He has not gotten in sync at all with their offense. These two clubs met in the opening of, of a se in the semifinal game in 1964, the year UCLA started the great run with Hazard and Goodrich. Duke beat Michigan that particular year, and then, of course, UCLA beat Duke for the championship. Grant Hill gets the pass, though, no, right off the hands of Leitner. King loading, missing. Thomas Hill lost it for a moment, snatches it back. His fourth rebound. They clobber Grant Hill. He'll go to the line for two. Jim, if there's any huge difference between these two teams, it is the charity stripe. In the case of Michigan, they have made 58 less free throws than their opponents and shot 35 less. Duke has, ma has made 290 more free throws than their opponents and shot 450 more. So a great imbalance in regard to the number of times these teams go to the line. A lot of that is orchestrated by the way their coach forces play on transition and with penetration to get there. Two for Hill as we look now at uh, the support graphic, Billy. Free throws for Duke. You can see. You can see they're averaging 32 a game. And again, 26 more free throw attempts than Indiana on Saturday. That foul was against James Bosco. Now with Weber back in the game, one of the things that he has got to really be careful is on the offensive glass, not going over somebody's back. Rob Palenka has come in for Michigan. He was a member of the 89 Wolverine championship team. Here he is, Palenka. 
remember who took the shot at the end of the game against oh, Duke up in Michigan? It was Polenka off the bench. In his first action, they brought him in at the last minute. An outside shooter. That foul against Grand Hill, and his first, and Duke's fifth. Billy, I know you want to send out some best wishes tonight to Frank McGuire. He's a Hall of Famer. He suffered a stroke today. 78-year-old coaching legend, and of course, he led North Carolina to one of the all-time greatest triple overtime victory over Kansas and Will Chamberlain for the national championship for the Tar Heels. 19, we wish him well. 1957. Right. Triple OT in the semis. Triple OT in the finals. And Weber will have one more. And here's Chris Weber having foul trouble, foul shooting trouble once again, shooting a little bit now under 50 percent on the year. Oh. And the two leaders for Duke University on the bench, Davis and Leighton. Mike Krzyzewski has seen about all of Leitner he wants for this period of time. He's just not getting it done. Oh. Early, Parks tries to tip it in. Gives Michigan a chance with the numbers. Rose comes from the other side. And he'll step to the line for two more. You know, if anybody ever sees Jalen Rose in practice, you would think that he could never turn on the afterburner. But we saw him right there just explode to the basket. Thomas Hill, Billy, with his second. In the act of shooting, Rose will shoot two. Ryan Davis, he's tested the ankle and uh, able to provide some minutes tonight for the Devils, replacing Thomas Hill. Jalen Rose a year ago led Southwestern High School to the state championship in Michigan. Same school that produced Anderson Hunt and his high school coach Perry Watson now on the staff for Steve Fisher. Watson of course incredible leader two state championship teams there. Incredible overall record was picked as the national high school coach of the year and they were the number one team in high school basketball a year ago. Three points for Rose as the all-time Michigan freshman scoring mark. Surpassing Mike McGee at one stage of this tournament. 18-17 Michigan. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Parks wide open at the free throw line. Good step out by Cherokee Parks who came in and did a great job against Indiana picking it up right where he left off. Michigan players have to realize Davis doesn't have good mobility. They need to put the ball to four and drive by. King wildly. And Hurley pulls up. Sharp play by Bobby Hurley. He realized he did not have the numbers, therefore don't go all the way to the basket. Pulls up and takes a jumper. Rose stopped his dribble. They've got oh, him doubled up. Foul, sure. Yep, they call it on Jalen Rose. He had nobody coming to the ball. He picked up his dribble at the worst place, right, right as he crossed half court. Jalen upset. There's no question he's the fellow that committed the foul by using his elbow to split the defense. His second team foul number six. An official's timeout. And the Devils have a three-point advantage. Back in the Metrodome, at least one famous father skipped work today. Calvin Hill, the former All-Pro running back and father of Grant, is also the vice president of the Baltimore Orioles, but he was not at Camden Yards today for the opener against Cleveland. He said he has 161 other games to catch the Orioles, only this chance to see his son. Jim? You can certainly understand the pride of Grant. <laughs> Calvin Hill. Leitner trying to get on track. And I think they're going to have to set some screens for him because people are playing behind him. His shot's not going down. He's got to get some easy ones. He is now one for five with six turnovers. Rose in and out. Good Rebound dish. Bounces to Grant Hill. And Davis, without that 100% speed, unable to challenge the Wolverines. Look at this pass. Weber fields it. Dunk time. Well, Jim, Davis just can't finish. Jalen Rose. Normally, Davis is one of the best slashers and finishers in college basketball. Had no chance to do that there. And well, back of the rim. Leitner has it taken out of his hands. And Rose Leitner. just had one beautiful assist. He looked for another. Finding Howard as the trailer. And Jim, you know what really concerns me about Christian Leitner? 
Now, it's one thing to be having a, a bad game, which he is having, but he didn't hustle that time. The ball hit off Howard. He stood at the other end of the floor. Mike Krzyzewski's going to have no patience with that. At one time this year, he was down 19 points but to Clemson, and he took his starters out and let the subs go ahead and get it back in there. Ask the starters if they really wanted to play. Now that... That was that Howard. Potential. Howard throwing him to the floor. Leitner in the act of shooting will shoot two. That's for Howard, his second. Yep. How about this pass, Billy, from Rose? Great pass, great catch, an excellent finish. And there goes that motion by Chris Weber. Now, think it, you know, when you throw a guy right to the floor like that, to me, that is an intentional foul. Billy, if it seems like Christian Leitner has been on the college basketball scene longer than any other player, it's only because it's true. He's played in more tournament games, and with this one tonight, it's his 148th game at Duke, and he passes Danny Manning for the most games ever played in college. Well, Danny Manning, in his final game, put a team on his back and carried him to a championship. So far, Christian Leitner is not getting that done. Of course, you can't fault them in one respect. Without him, they wouldn't be here. Lang in for Leitner. He passed Elvin Hayes, the Big E, although he's had numerous more opportunities, Billy, than Hayes had in the tournament. Manning, the third all-time score. Well, he has a chance to also become the all-time steal leader, beating Mookie Blaylock yeah. if he can get two of those. Howard spinning around. And Hurley would have the numbers again. Palenka went down. Driving past King. Loose ball. Lang in there. Oh. Weber just takes it away. And how about that dribbling ability of Chris Weber? How about the oh! behind the back and Palenka score it in the Some sensational dribbling by Chris Weber on both halves of the court. And then what a feed. Jim, I said at the top of the show, we may be seeing the changing of the guard. And that certainly was done with some emphasis. There was no foul on that play. A Duke player had his hand caught in the net. So it would have been basket interference had Palenka missed. But Rob Palenka, off the beautiful pass from Weber, gives Michigan a two-point lead. Hill right back, trying to tie it. Weber on the line. Weber's dribbling just to get free of the good defense with something, and then when he puts it behind his back, Polinka with a 360, and the reason for the whistle, as you pointed out, Jim, it would have been goaltending had it not gone in anyway. You see how it just picks up this Michigan team when Weber does something sensational. Off the screen, Hurley kicks it over. Thomas Hill, short. 44, Cherokee Parks pushing. A moment ago, Krzyzewski dealing with Christian Leitner. Jim, I've only seen Mike Krzyzewski get on Christian like that once before, and that was when the team was getting ready to go up to play in the World Games. And he got in his face something serious there. It looked like, if you could read the lips, it looked like he said, you walked to the ball. Parks goes out now with two fouls, having committed the one on Weber. Chris Weber, of course, we saw him in the first game against Duke. 11 for 15, 12 rebounds, 27 points. Oh, what a leap by Hill. But that was a vertical leap, 30-some inches. He has five rebounds. Under five to play in the first half. Leitner, after the pep talk, off the mark. Oh, Jim, see how he's shooting and standing still? He's not following his shot. But the he hits put the back, floor and looks at it. The put back by Grant Hill. Good ball handling by Howard. And dishes on the baseline. Weber misses. No. Rose follows. No block out on the wing by Bobby Hurley. 
but excellent ball handling by Howard and Weber. Grant Hill wants the baseline and uses the glass to perfection. Six for Grant Hill. Nobody glides in any better than he does to the basket. Back screen that time, Howard almost had it. Jimmy King back in the iron. Weber up high to zip it home. And no block out on the inside. Mike Krzyzewski saying Hurley got pushed off. No call. Good switch by Chris Weber. Boy glides past Weber this time. Does Grant Hill three? Consecutive baskets for Grant Hill. Jim Weber made the switch that time and he was looking for some help on the inside. But Howard, Howard has the position. He's working Leitner over inside. Rose over the top. Leitner's second rebound. And here he is walking down the court again. Oh! Lang with a loose change. Jim Leitner never crossed half court on that possession. You don't know if he's sick, but he certainly is a major story in this first half. And for Duke on the negative side. Turnover by Michigan. And watch Leitner, Billy. Jim, see. Jim, here he is, you have nine guys. He'd normally be under the boards battling. Look, he's up over at half court. Nine men down on the other end of the offensive end of the court. An official's timeout. Over 50,000 inside the Metrodome with two minutes to go in the first half. Billy, the game summary. At this point, your thoughts? Well, kind of interesting. Duke is getting the job done on the boards, and even though they're hitting the offensive boards, they can't get the putbacks because Michigan filling right in on them. Good block out by Grand Hill. Smart play. Here are some numbers now to support what you were talking about. Field goal percentages. Duke under 40 percent. Duke with 11 turnovers. Leitner with six of those. Being guarded now by Riley. Doubled up. Use the left hand. Strongest move, perhaps, I, I, of the two games in Minneapolis. Jim, when a guy's having a bad game, a big man, it's good to get him down in the low post and get him the ball to get some confidence back. He's been playing so much on the perimeter. When you're not hitting your shot, that's tough for a big fella. Remember Freddie Hunter? We told his story, how he was on the intramural champs. Here he is in the game now. Oh, he throws it away. Hill stole it. Made a great play, actually, to deny Jimmy King. Leitner thought he might challenge Riley. He's he looking to get in the low post. There he is. Hill has to just throw it right into the hands of Oscar. That was another yeah. bad pass. It was. Leitner put Hill on a disadvantage there. Good hedge by Lang. Now he's got to stay with it. Rose up high. So smooth. Uh, Jaden Rose, such a smart basketball player. When he saw the hedge taking place by Lang stepping out, he forced Lang to take him, and Lang can't stay with his dribble. Duke kids look very tired at this point in the game. Going to hold it for the last shot of the half. And Steve Fisher's not coming out to play him. Duke has its starting lineup on the floor for the last possession of the first half. There is actually a one-second difference. Jim, I think that Duke is much more effective in this set when, when Hill takes it inside because he can play over bigger people, but it's going to be Hurley this time. Hurley gets the motor look for, running at look 10. Look for Thomas Hill on the double screen. Here he comes. Hurley driving on King. Leitner outside. Makes the head fake. Leans in off the glass. No, back of the rim. And Michigan will go to the locker room with a one-point lead.
into the first half with the score Michigan 31 Duke 30 and CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA basketball championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Michigan 31 to 30 at halftime a close first half four ties 12 lead changes and the largest lead at any one time was four by Michigan. Hey, Michigan was very late coming out here. Jim, for the there, second were, half. there were only about 40 seconds of warm up time for, for Michigan. I looked at the referees. They said they have never been in a situation where neither team was on the floor when they came back out. The story obviously was the first half. What was Christian Laker and I think back you know you talked about his great stats. 24 against Alonzo Mourning in the tournament, 28 against UNLV, great games against, against Shaq O'Neal, tremendous game against Kentucky. This fellow is certainly capable. It'll be interesting to see how he responds and what is going to be the last half of his collegiate career. What's your gut feeling? Will he have a big half? Yeah, after what I saw in the first half, Jim, which really shocked me because I've seen him throughout his four-year career. I've never seen anything like that before at any time in any game. Good cut by King. King couldn't handle it though, and Duke has the numbers. Back to yeah. Leitner, they get him started right away. Well, if you're gonna get a big man started, get him down low. That was a good cut by King, he just couldn't handle the pass. Solid screen, looking for the lob to Howard, he's got good post position. Flips it over, half hook. And Michigan, Michigan back in front by one. Lang has got to recognize when he's going to be back screen like that. Leitner, he wants the jumper and hits the three. His first shot really from the outside. He may be ready to answer that question. Off the fingertips of King. And there's Christian Leitner beating everybody down court, getting back down in position. Teammates cheering him on, cheering on their captain. Hey, Mike Krzyzewski said, let's get the ball to the big guy. Early brings it over to Leitner's side. Now he'll go across. Clear out. As Hill drives baseline. Jalen Rose couldn't handle Hill on the clear out. Nine for Thomas. Duke has its largest lead, a four point lead. Weber challenging Leitner, missing the hook. Howard, who did not score in the first half. I mean, did not get a rebound the first half. That was his first one of the game. Right by Leitner, Weber, score it, and he'll shoot one. You know, I think he is so effective. I mentioned in the first game we did this year, he reminds me so much of James Worthy, Worthy with that great shot, drop step he has in the low post. And you can see he is by Leitner before Leitner even can react. Second foul on the Watch end of this play, Billy, by Grant Hill. Watch that quick reverse. Second time tonight, Weber's gone around him. So quick. In the first game, Weber dunked on Leitner, and they talked a little bit. He said, you've just been dunked on on national television. Leitner came back and later dunked on Weber and said, that's how you do it, little kid. They talked a lot on that first one, Billy. Well, there hasn't been much conversation at all tonight, which kind of surprised me. Look at him driving. Leitner gets caught, gets it out to Hill. Great block. Blocked by Jackson. Hurley trying to draw a foul on that play. Howard no call. Rebound. Hurley didn't try to make that shot as much as he tried to get Rose to foul it. Rose with the three. Leitner's fourth rebound. Up ahead to Hill. Fouled with the body by Jackson. Yeah, and every time I see that, Billy, I think back to the Hurley to Hill combination last year against Kansas. The dunk that will be play, replayed for years to come. The one you compared to David Thompson. Yeah. Related to David Thompson, which took it all the way back to 1974. Thomas Hill. That's short, and there's a push off inside. And is that Rose's third? Well, Jerry Donahue signals it's on Rose. His third. And what they're doing to Jalen Rose right now is setting him up for one on one moves against him because he's matched up with Hill. Steve Fisher's got a decision to make. It could be Tally coming in off the bench. Steve Fisher coaching his 100th game. 
at Michigan. Thomas Hill to the line for two. One of three starters in the championship game from the state of Texas. Weber has fouled out of five games this year, but Jalen Rose, with all of his responsibilities, has not fouled out one time this year. So although Steve Fisher's contemplating a move, he keeps walking on the sidelines trying to figure out what to do. The guy's been weaving a magic wand in NCAA tournament play, the 12 and one record. And he's got a decision to make now. James Bosco checks in for Michigan for Rose, who will sit with the three. Now, let's see if Duke starts to press. With Rose out of the game, it'd be excellent time to press because now you've got Jimmy King as the primary ball handler. Good move by Mike Krzyzewski. Lang well, comes over point. to double up. King, two-pointer, had a foot on the line, and Leitner has the rebound come right to him. Lang, bouncing it into Hill. Oh, that's three on Weber now. Three on Weber, three on Rose. A repeat of the Indiana situation where four players fouled out, and Duke put them in a very precarious position on that great run they made in the second half by going to the charity stripe time and time again. Weber had looked like mostly all ball on the play. But his third, and Thomas Hill back to the line. Billy, I mentioned a, a moment ago that three starters from the state of Texas who were pickup games in the Dallas area at the Redbird Gym south of Dallas just this past summer. Jimmy King, Thomas Hill, Larry Johnson. <laughs> if you think about it, Shaquille O'Neal, the players that have come out of the state and have left the Southwest Conference, it's alarming. Now here, here you can see what Steve Fisher's doing. He's playing the percentages. He comes back with Rose, who has three, but he knows that Rose has been very good at being able to protect himself and not falling out, where Weber has not. And he knows he can't have both of them sitting at this key juncture in the game. Oh! Howard on the rebound for his third rebound, all in the second half. Riley posting up Leitner. Leitner comes over to help out on King. Oh, Good rebound, and Lang starts the break. Leitner on a wing. Hurley gets it back to him. Slipped out of Leitner's hands. King was on the line. Another great event starts Thursday night on CBS. Late night highlights. The first round of the Masters, both Thursday and Friday night. Weekend coverage coming your way as well on CBS. But you can see they want to get the ball to Thomas Hill down there. He's got Rose on him. He's trying to post it. Lang couldn't handle it. Jackson ahead to King. King's going to dunk on him. Yes. The Duke was so anxious to get the ball to Thomas Hill, hoping to pick up Rose's fourth, that they got out of their offensive sink. It's time now to go back to Christian Leitner in the low post. 39-37, Duke, 16 minutes to go. Grant Hill slips it in to Lang, and Duke dunks right back on Michigan. Third time today that Grant Hill has taken him with that floater on the baseline. Left hand by Rose, he's got the drive. Howard, after a couple of dribbles, ball tip. Lang couldn't handle it. Jackson ahead to King. King's gonna dunk on him, yes. The Duke was so anxious to get the ball to Thomas Hill, hoping to pick up Rose's fourth, that they got out of their offensive sink. It's time now to go back to Christian Leitner in the low post. 39-37, Duke. 16 minutes to go. Grant Hill slips it in to Lang, and Duke dunks right back on Michigan. 
third time today that Grand Hill has taken him with that floater on the baseline. Left hand by Rose, he's got the drive. Howard, after a couple of dribbles, ball tipped around to Grant Hill. Good defensive balance by Michigan. Thwarted any opportunity to get the break. Next, immediate double team. Three pointer is short, way short. And with a dead ball under the 16 minute mark, an official's timeout in the national championship game. The Metrodome opened 10 years ago this week with a Twins game, and now it's the third largest house to a college basketball game. The Superdome in New Orleans, next year's Final Four site, has the top five attendance figures of all time. The Astrodome is next, and then the Metrodome. Billy, take it away with the game so Well, you look right there. It's pretty even all the way around. Leitner looking a little better here in the second half. And what Steve Fisher has done is said, I've got to come back now. I can't let Duke open up any margin. So he's come back with both Rose and Weber. Both have three fouls on him. Left-handed clear out for Rose. Hurley does a nice job on defense. Riley, he's hit one turn around, oh, not this push. time. And a push off on Leitner. Weber and Leitner could have been called either way as they were both battling for position. But Weber had the inside. It was an anxious moment there for yep. Steve Fisher, but Leitner is whistled for his first. And only the second of the second half against Duke. Ray Jackson inbounds. They get back out to King. Riley. Had it stripped away right back, Riley. It should have been a jump ball situation. It was blocked, and he caught it, and then came down. Lang sets the screen for Hurley oh, oh, with the left hand. Weber knocks oh, it out Riley, of the Riley, what a play by Riley. Strong rebound. Just as he came up with a huge game against Oklahoma State, he's in there today. He's got Hurley down in the low post. And he pushed off Riley. Yep. Great acting job by Bobby Hurley. Riley had him pinned down inside. He wasn't patient enough. That's his first. Michigan's fourth team foul of the half. Cherokee Parks in for Duke. And Brian Davis comes in. Playing out. Grant Hill out. Jim, the thing that's interesting about Brian Davis, we saw him try to loosen up that ankle before the game. And he didn't have an opportunity, obviously, to loosen it up because Duke was only out for about 30 seconds of warm-ups to start the second half. Let's see if it's really tightened up on him now. There's a switch. Doubled up late. Well, see, Parks is not going to be played from there. Riley's going to fall back in on Leighton. Looking like they wanted to get something down inside with Parks and Leitner in the double O post. Ten on the shot clock. Davis wide open. Oh. Riley snags it for Michigan. His fourth rebound. Wants some help. Weber thinks he can take Cherokee Parks with a dribble. Must beat the shot clock. Well, well, they got a little too frenetic at the end of that, and Rose dribbles it off his leg. Now, what Mike Krzyzewski going to do? He comes right back with Grand Hill, and he says to Brian Davis, thank you very much for giving me 30 seconds that I needed, young man. And even though he missed that jumper, I think Mike Krzyzewski felt he just had to give Grant Hill a rest. I'll tell you, a guy who could have given him some minutes tonight's Billy McCaffrey at 16 in last year's final. Hurley oh, missing the layup. Oh, Leitner on the follow. No, Parks. Oh. 
He'll go That's to another one on Rose. That's his fourth. Great follow plays on the inside by Cherokee Park. Uh, and, and what Jay, what Jalen Rose is saying to me is replay that one. See if that was my foul. And you know what? That one might have been. Not the first one. And he's got to come out of there now. It's got to be Tally coming in, and it is going to be. That was a great defensive effort, the last possession of Michigan's on behalf of Duke. Just took away every shooting opportunity. Parks and Leitner talk. He's the heir apparent to Leitner's position. And what a way to burst onto the Comets scene by making your first 11 field goals in college. That's what Parks did. And now Tally comes in and rows out with the four fouls. Jim Parks, another one of those super recruits of McDonald's High School All-American. Eight of the ten kids that started tonight were McDonald's High School All-Americans. So when you wonder where that talent pool is coming from, that would be a perfect example. You don't get here if you don't have players. Riley really backed in on Parks and then pinned the ball to the floor, but they get the whistle now against Hurley, his third. Well, remember the occasion where Riley was patient, what was impatient, and the foul was called on Riley. This time, Riley just stayed with it and they picked up Hurley, so that's pretty even trade-off. Duke leads it 43-39 with 12.30 to go. Nice day. Nice day. Too strong on the shot. Weber with the rebound to kick it out to Tally. Short on the three. Tapped again to Tally. Bounces it right into the hands of Davis, who returns. And you notice Davis said to Bobby Hurley, no fast break. This game has been lacking almost completely of any transition baskets. Jim, you said it right. It's like a heavyweight boxing match by two old heavyweights that are just slugging at each other, neither one able to break open. No knockout punch until, well, uh -huh. look at that, almost going in on the alley-oop pass. And, and it was really, it would have been an easy play for Hill had that been thrown on the money. Bobby Hurley can't believe he misjudged that one. Not a pretty game at all. But like I said, the, like a championship fight with two over-aged <laughs> and overweight fighters and no knockout blow. They go 15 rounds, and you can't tell who gets the decision. Riley on the blocks, doubled up. Weber gets Leitner to commit, dumps it inside and Tally. Oh, great block by Cherokee Parks, the leading shot blocker on the Duke team. It'll be Duke's basketball when we come back, an official's timeout. The Devils going for the repeat, leading by four. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Championship game, Big Ten versus ACC. Billy and field goal percentage in this half backs up what we were saying a moment ago. Well, Duke is a team that shoots right at 54% from the field, and Michigan right at 40, I mean 50%. Duke has not made a field goal in the last 442. Both teams do play hard-nosed defense to the point you don't get a lot of easy basket. But neither team has been fresh in a half-court offense. Leitner, three-pointer, his second of the half. Well, that was a good looking shot. Nice follow-through by Christian Leitner. 13 points for Christian Leitner. Duke has its largest lead, a seven-point lead, and a foul on Parks, his third. Duke's fourth. Well, uh, an experienced player in Riley who went through the Big Ten Wars last year as a starting postman, just getting better position than his Parks. Parks is trying, but Riley's using the edge in uh, experience. Rose comes back, Billy, with the four fouls, and Ray Jackson goes to the bench. Kind of surprised at that one. A little early to get Jalen in there. He fouls out, and they're really missing their leader down the stretch. I thought Steve Fisher would wait about the six-minute mark. Instead, 10.51 10, 10, to go. Real gamble here. Bosco. Oh, he had nine in the second half against Cincinnati. There's his first two, but a driving shot, similar to one he made and was fouled on in the last game. And in nine and seven minutes. Thomas Hill makes a juke on Rose. Missing whoever, no doubt about that rebound. His seventh. Thomas Hill ought to drive on Rose and not pull up with a jumper. Make him follow him all the way to the basket.
Hill steals oh, it. Oh, almost the fifth foul on Rose. Hurley, they can't buy a basket. Only the three by Leitner in the last six minutes. Hurley's three for 11 from the floor for the game. Isn't it amazing how much quicker Vosco seems than everybody on the floor? He's got the fresh legs. What we're seeing in the Duke team is a club that has really had the battle to get here, and they are just worn down. The lead had been seven a moment ago. It's down to three. Weber with 12 points. Mike Krzyzewski using a little clock here. Parks over Weber. Bosco. I thought the other 32 might get it, but Bosco gets the rebound. Leitner was too far under the basket. Leitner's trying to push himself to run, but he just has no legs. Michigan turns it over. 17 turnovers against the Wolverines as Lang and Howard return. And at the conclusion of this championship game, Billy and I will be selecting Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Jim, we talk about the men's championship where the guys not have any legs. The women have to had to come back without that full day's rest, so our hats off have to go to Stanford for their conditioning. Lang in a jam, out to Hill. Hurley, pump fake, sets up the two. What? Weber, Weber is controlling the board. And Hurley reached in. And for Hurley, that's four on Hurley. Four on Hurley, four on Rose. Well, neither team really has a man that can replace Rose or Hurley, but you'd have to throw it back over to Michigan, assuming if something happened to Rose, at least they have Tally, who was a starting point guard in the Big Ten last year. So I'd say advantage Michigan. I wonder if Duke is going to try to go a little zone, try to save somebody. There they're matching up in the zone. Rose off balance. Not a good shot. Hurley with the rebound all alone. What's this going to take away for Hurley is his ability to penetrate because he can't draw any charges. Duke has made one of its last 10 shots. Leitner inside, working on Weber. Gets the fake, and he'll go to the line for two. He may have been better off shooting the first time after the fake. Well, he's so good at getting on that line. You can see Weber, who is going to... Tremendous head and shoulder fake by Leitner. And that's the third on Jawan Howard. Colonel Leitner will go to the line. That's what his teammates are calling him. He won all of these College Player of the Year awards and just recently was named the Rupp Award winner. And when you get the Rupp Award presentation, they make you a Kentucky Colonel. So kind of ironic with what he did to Kentucky this year. They call him Colonel on this Duke team now. Davis in for Hurley. Yeah. And Rob Polinka for Michigan is back. And Jim, you can see what Mike Krzyzewski is going to do when Hurley went out this year, as we remember, with the injury to his foot. It was Grant Hill that went to the point guard position, which is what he's going to have to do tonight. But without Brian Davis, that means Hill really would have to play almost all the remaining minutes while Hurley sits down. So maybe that injury to Hurley in, during the season actually helped Duke because they experienced playing without him for a little bit. Give Leitner his due. He has come back with 10 points in the second half, and Duke leads by five. Good ball fake. Howard finds an open king in and out. Palenka keeps it alive. Obviously, the ball hit the rim, and therefore, the shot clock was set back at 45. Jimmy King to Palenka, blocked by Hill. Palenka tried to improvise with the left hand. Some block by Grant Hill. Hill, Hill, Leitner, and Davis, and, and Lang on the court. And Mike Krzyzewski saying, I've got to rest my players by using this clock some. We saw Mike Krzyzewski go to this strategy when Hurley got hurt. They did this an awful lot. So they learned a lot during that period of time this season. At one point, Grant Hill out. Other point, Hurley out. 
Billy, they take 30 seconds off the clock. Now they put it back in play with Hill missing on the drive. Look at Davis fighting for it with the sprained ankle on the floor. Rose at the other end. Gets the roll. Nine points for Jalen Rose. One of the things is tough is to complete a play when you go all the way in because Weber and Howard are so big inside. Timeout called by Duke. Under seven minutes to play. No one able to pull out with the big lead. It's now Duke by three. Duke has made only one of its last 11, but still leads by three. Rose and Hurley with four fouls each. The Michigan team had a guest speaker last week, a motivational speech from Bo Schimbeckler. He told him, I didn't like you guys at first, because I didn't think you played with teamwork. But you guys have now grown on me, and go get it. Go win it for Michigan. Christian Leitner on a drive, can't handle it. Look at him oh, back. what a finish. Hey, he is gutting it out here in the second half. Let's give him credit. First half, he disappeared. He doesn't have his legs here tonight, but he's gutting it out with everything he's got. He has 12 of Duke's 20 in the second half. And Weber's taking a challenge on right now. He wants the ball down low against Leitner. Over the top, Leitner steals it. Puts him near that steal record. That's one shy of Mookie Blaylock. And by the way, Steve Fisher said to pass along best wishes to Millie Schimbeckler, who's been under the weather and said the whole team's thinking of her. 50-45 Duke with 6-10 to go. Palinka on Hurley. Hurley again saddled with the four. Jim, before that basket by Leitner, Le uh, Duke had hit their first three shots in the half, and then they were two for 14 up to Leitner's shot thereafter. That's 14%, and they're still in the lead. Leitner, by the way, has scored their last seven points. Hill driving past Thanks. everyone. Riding move again. And he has, uh, he has the spin on it. And a great play, a smart play by Antonio Lang. He was going to go up to give that a little touch and pulled his hand back. They're going to be some tired fellas when this game is over. King, three-pointer. That's a push off inside. I think it's going to be on Weber. It is on Weber. His fourth. Four on Weber, four on Rose. And that's number seven against Michigan. That'll put Duke on the line for a one and one. I think that was an ill-advised three by Jimmy King. Yeah, it was. He didn't seem real sure of it. He's kind of, they're getting frustrated, and a lot of that is because Duke is playing great defense on their end of the floor. They're just not getting any easy shots. Remember the pass that Howard, it was probably an ill-advised pass that Leitner picked off. We tried to go down inside on Weber. James Bosco signals for a Michigan timeout. Five seventeen to go. Duke with a seven-point lead, which mark matches its largest lead. Each team has used a timeout in this half. Two remaining for each. Duke has the arrow. Jim, what I think we're going to see out of Duke the rest of the way is they're going to pull that ball out, try to take 30 seconds or so off the clock on every possession. One and one for Leitner. And they are now back to what has become a Duke trademark. They have made more free throws than Michigan has shot. Leitner says, I've got a bad memory. I don't remember last year's championship. I want another one. And he hits two, and he is starting to take control of this game, Billy. Yeah, he's showing a lot of courage in this game. Coming off of that first half and coming back the way he is now. He has 19 points, and Duke with its largest lead of nine. Uh, Duke picking up their defense, man to man, and Howard banging Lang inside, as is Weber with Leitner. Bosco. Oh! Leitner blocked it. I think Leitner enjoyed getting up there on the boards on that one. Foul on Antonio Lang, his first. Jim, it's going to be really interesting to talk, regardless of the outcome of this game, to Christian Leitner afterwards and find out if he was physically or mentally drained at the start of this game because it was so unusual to watch him not follow his shots, not be able to get up in the air. And, and you know, sometimes the emotional strain of all these that all these kids have been through can just wear you out. You just don't have any, any effort whatsoever available. Bosco, two shots.
Michigan now with that free throw. Three points in the last five minutes. Boskul and Riley were red shirt freshmen on that 89 championship team. They sat on the bench in street clothes. Now trying to contribute to the Wolverines championship. And look tonight. at what happened. Michigan realizing Duke's going to try to occupy some time picking up full court. Boy, that's asking a lot of effort. Steve Fisher has his team well scouted. Leitner, ooh, Voskel almost had that one. Leitner called for it. He's doubled up, swings it over to an open Thomas Hill. Drives for the two. Tipped up. Oh, what a rebound by Thomas Hill. He really got off the ground on that play. Mike Juszewski loved it. 13 for Hill. Voskel, three-pointer. Oh, there was a push-off by Jimmy King. He knocked, Grant, he, he knocked Thomas Hill right under the basket and got away with it. Duke has possession and a nine-point lead with four minutes to go. And there's that front guard scoring. Duke way up, 20 to eight. And there's what I was talking about. Take time off the clock, force Michigan to do all the chasing. The other thing this does is save Bobby Hurley from not getting in any further foul trouble. 15 of the 20 points you just saw front court scoring in a half for Duke. Coming from Leitner, who really is backing in on Howard. Sets a screen now for Hill. Oh! Mike Juszewski is exhorting his team on in the sidelines like a super jockey over there. He's got them going down a stretch again. Weber. Tough shot. He made it. 315 to play. Steve Fisher is going to have to press full court as Duke is going to occupy this clock. He's got to come out and get him. They've got everything up high now. It's an opportunity for somebody to go back back door for an easy layup. Hurley called a timeout. He was doubled up by Weber and King. Calls the timeout. Duke has only one timeout remaining. Duke led by Leitner's 19 points. First half, he had 5.7 turnovers. Second half, no turnovers and 14 points. What a turnaround, Billy. Uh, just a real great gut check by Christian Leitner, the player of the year. This is not unusual, however, because Duke, uh, Jim, on the year, has had 122 more assists than turnovers. And for Michigan, they have 37 more turnovers and assists. So Duke is playing to form here. Down to 14 seconds. Is the shot clock. Clear out. Rose has got a tough man. Got to watch his fifth. Hurley with under oh. five. Good block. Hill has to beat the clock by a second. And tipped up and in by Grant Hill. Grant Hill, three offensive tip-ins against Indiana with a crushing blow. And he comes up with one here. That's Big basket. Two putbacks tonight for Grant Hill. And nine rebounds. Double-digit lead for the Devils. Trying to get Bosco for a three. Stolen by Hill. Now Michigan really has to come out with some kamikaze pressure. Steve Fisher can't wait any longer. Under two. Under two to play. Lang is open. Lang for the jam. Timeout by Michigan. Each team is left with one timeout. The Devils are starting the celebration. This is how Duke saw it a moment ago. And Mike Krzyzewski was animated as well at that time. After the jam by Lang, a 13-point lead, 144 to play. They've got to be thinking threes here. Voskel's a man they'd like to take, and Howard with a long one. Grant Hill Grand with Hill his again. tenth rebound. And Bobby Hurley just wants to use clock here. Thomas Hill will shoot free throws. Fouled by Bosco. That's the eighth team foul. It'll be a one-on-one -one situation. Jim, kind of surprised that Steve Fisher doesn't start playing that game of a certain team for offense and a certain team for defense and figure out, like, Palinka's a three-point shooter. Voskal, a three-point shooter. 
Jimmy King a three-point shooter. They've got to surround down there and go for threes. One and one for Hill. 13 points, seven rebounds. And that second number, Jim, is the one where he has played a huge game tonight. Called upon to go inside time and again to rebound, and he's come up with some great plays. Came to college as not one of the most heralded recruits, but has certainly become a valuable player for this team. Even played for the U.S. team in the summer, Billy. Big future, Thomas Hill. Weber with his 11th rebound. He has another double-double. Rose with a three. <laughs> Tipped over the backboard. Duke basketball. Michigan has gone now almost nine minutes with only six points. Reach in on King. Still a one and one. That's the ninth team foul. The next foul situation will be a double bonus. We'll shoot two. Jim, one of the things about Mike Krzyzewski as a coach is this entire year, and I've watched him time and time again, game after game, he never talks about a negative. And I think that this team probably rode on his back tonight more than at any time in his coaching career when he went in and there at halftime. He just does not allow a team to quit. His team certainly didn't have it in the first half. He kept them in that locker room. We give a lot of credit to that fellow who is now going down in the history books with some of the great ones. Only the second coach to take five straight teams to the final four. And he'll join John Wooden. Wooden was the last to repeat. Michigan ball. Now what Duke could do is break Michigan's back now because Michigan is sending five men to the boards. All Duke should do is tap the ball along and they'll find Bobby Hurley alone for a layup. Weber. Rose. Now Rose is kicking the ball. He's the clock still moving. And the clock Billy. is moving. Now the referee called the time. So that was not a wise thing for Rose to do. His shot dropped through with the minute and one second to play and Took away about six seconds on the clock. Ooh, Pass with nothing on it. Riley could have picked it off. Th Thomas Hill will shoot two. That's ten team fouls. Repeat winners. UCLA. Well, so many times in that remarkable stretch. Cincinnati, Bill Russell in San Francisco. Kentucky and they were known as Oklahoma A&M back in 45 and 46. <laughs> Jim one of the strangest championship games that I've had an opportunity to witness. There's a man here tonight in the crowd by the name of Jack Gardner that took two teams two different teams twice to the final four and championship. Utah and uh, Kansas, Utah, State. Kansas State actually was uh, the coach of the Kansas State team that lost to Kentucky and he has seen every single final four. There may be somebody else in this arena that has but that's some record. Wonderful man Jack Gardner. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer age 82. Jason Bossard for Michigan. We'll see some minutes. And Mike Krzyzewski seeing what Steve Fisher is going to do. I think he may counter likewise. Nonetheless, the final seconds of Kristen Lakers' career coming to a close. His jersey will never be worn again. It's already There's been retired. And here comes Duke on the break. Behind the back, Hurley to Hill. Why not? That's the play that was available. Nobody back for Michigan because they're sending five to the boards. Rose. Lakner flips it back. Burns some time. And King back to the front court. See what Mike Krzyzewski is saying is foul because can Hurley not even in the one and one yet. Set him up. Yep. And a timeout called by Duke. He wanted to get the other players in, Jim. That's why they called the timeout. Not to rub it into Michigan.
really the first time we've seen Mrs. Leitner. She's been in a lot of pain with that neck operation several months back. First time we've seen her smile. She sends a kiss down to Christian Leitner, who has checked out of the game, and number 32 will never be worn on the floor again for the Duke Blue Devils. Two thousand the jersey has points. been retired. A 2,000 point score, a thousand rebounds at Duke University. Certainly one of the great all time players in college basketball history, and I'm so happy for him and what happened in the second half. At first half, it was uh, had to be a nightmare for Christian Layton. Well, they wouldn't have made it to the Final Four two times in his career if it wasn't for his heroics. Exactly. And you can see the Fab Five. Now starting to realize what it takes to get over that hump to be the national crown. The game is over. The Duke of Destiny has won it. For the first time in two decades, college basketball has a repeat champion. away you can still feel the celebration back from Cameron Duke is the 1992 national champion.